Hi, you're with Scott. It's vegan time. It's midnight. It's always midnight. And this is vegan time, my regular Saturday vegan vlog. Today, I want to discuss victory over SeaWorld. This week, vegans were able to celebrate some awesome news. SeaWorld have decided to stop breeding orcas since they no longer capture live killer whales. This means an end to captive orca shows by SeaWorld. Through education, awareness and social pressure, the vegan animal rights community won a victory. I want to give everyone who tweeted about SeaWorld, who tweeted about Blackfish, everyone who emailed SeaWorld or just said to a friend, I don't think this is right, have you seen the documentary? I want to give you all a hug. This was in no small part due to the Blackfish film. Okay. We'll get somebody in route. Okay. Through gate number three to Shamu Stadium. Gate three. Gate three. Gate three. We need SO to respond for a dead person at SeaWorld. Uh, a whale has eaten one of the trainers. A whale ate one of the trainers? That's correct. The film documents the tragic story of both whales and trainers at SeaWorld. At first, it's the shocking and sad story of how trainers lost their lives. Through the documentary, we begin to see the whales as characters too, specifically Tilikum. I had actually seen Tilikum quite a number of times. He was right across the street here in Victoria. All Sealand was was a net hanging in a marina with a float around it. Tilikum was the one we really love to work with. He was very well behaved and he was always eager to please. Our sympathy is moved from the trainers who are placed in difficult and dangerous situations, but to the whales who are the victims of a deplorable catalogue of abuses. From violent capture to solitary confinement, it becomes clear that these majestic creatures are capable of emotion, complex cultural and social behaviours, and their separation from their natural families and subsequent entrapment just seem like horrific suffering. The people who work for SeaWorld capturing the whales and training them also feel instinctively that this is some kind of suffering. But I was told because of shipping costs, that's why they only take the little ones. They had the young ones that they wanted in the corrals, so they dropped the seine nets and all the others could have left, but they stayed. where they're trying to get the young orca in the stretcher and the whole fam damley is out here 25 yards away maybe in a, in a big line. Uh, I lost it. I mean, I just I started crying. I didn't stop working. There's something wrong, you know, with Tillicum that there's, there's something wrong and that's uh, when you have a relationship with the animal and you you understand that he's killing not to be a savage. He's not killing because he's just crazy. He's not killing because he doesn't know what he's doing. He's killing because he's frustrated and he's got aggravations and, and he doesn't know how to, he has no outlet for it. It seems no surprise that these intelligent, caring animals become mentally disturbed when kept in small tanks and coerced to perform. It was also really sad to see the trainers who clearly loved animals, taking part in the abuses through confused motives and because of the tired ideas our society still holds on to and teaches. If you haven't seen the Blackfish film, watch it. The film itself and its main subject, Tilikum, have become iconic figures in the fight for animal rights. I want to reiterate, this film changed the world. It helped to change people's opinions. It helped to bring these ideas to the mass market and it didn't have to do any clever editing or sensationalist expose. It just showed the truth and seeing the truth invoked basic human compassion in a vast majority of people who watched it. It's also true that US courts recently ruled against swimming with the orca, giving SeaWorld some problems to consider. I wanna make it clear, SeaWorld is still a company that exists solely through the exploitation of animals. The directors of SeaWorld are not ethical people. They care about their money 
more than the safety of the people that visit the parks, the animals in the parks and the trainers. It's obvious that they're prepared to put people in real life threatening danger for money. Profit over people. So how could you expect them to care about the animals when they don't even care about the people? SeaWorld and companies like it will continue to exploit animals and to teach some spurious ideas. These kind of places often masquerade as educational facilities, but of course the ideas they teach about keeping animals captive serve themselves. However, their time is over. The modern, ecological, ethical, compassionate world is here and it's taking over. Things are moving forward, thanks to you. Each tweet, every message, every idea, it's important. It takes every drop of rain to create the storm. Zoos, sea parks, any business that makes its profits through the exploitation of captive animals will become extinct. And the more we discover about animal behaviour, the more obvious it becomes. Animals deserve rights. Now we have the technology to allow us to see these animals in their natural habitats without molestation. When I heard the news about SeaWorld, I was moved to tears. It was a mixture of relief, elation, but a reminder of the sadness I felt learning Tillicum's story. Tillicum's dying. Tillicum's dying of an infection. Tillicum is dying of an infection in captivity and will probably never be free. He deserves freedom. But through his suffering, because he was forced to live a torture of a life, he somehow, through his refusal, his strength of will, his determination, his disruption, his degradation and degeneration, through his frustration, he changed the world for others, people and animals. I love you, Tillicum. God bless you. And I love you, vegans. God bless you too. This is one step forward and we'll keep fighting. The world is changing and we are changing it. So thank you. Thank you. I've been Scott. This is my Saturday vegan vlog. I'll be back next Saturday with more vegan stuff. Be good, my little podcast. Be good.